In this example, we want to find the spanning set for the null space of A, where A is given as the uh, as the three by five matrix. Okay, so first we're going to solve for the null space of A, which means that we're going to solve for the the uh, homogeneous uh, system. And then from there, we're going to write that solution in parametric form. Okay, so so for our matrix, okay. We have minus three, six, negative one, one, negative seven, one, negative two, two, three, negative one, two, negative four, five, eight, and negative four. So using row using the row operations, okay. I'm gonna put this into row reduced row echelon form. So that's gonna give us one, negative two. 0, negative 1, 3, uh, 0, 0, 1, 2, negative 2, and then the last row is all zeros. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and throw in the, the zero factor there. Okay, so now um, in this case we have uh, two basic variables, x1 x3 okay so so that means x4 so x4 let's see so x2 x4 and x5 are free variables okay so it's x2 x4 and x5 and we have our basic variables so the basic variables here are x1 and x3 okay so in this case we're going to assign each of the three variables a parameter okay so let um, let x5 be equal to let's say t where t is a real number, okay. X4, we're going to call this s, where s is a real number. And x2, we're going to call it r, where r is a real number. Okay. So now we can solve for x1, x3 in terms of our free variables. Okay. So starting, looking at the uh, second row. So we have x, let's see, x3 plus 2 times x4 plus 2 times x5 equals to 0. Okay, so we're going to get x3 plus x4 was s, x5 is t. Okay, so that means x3 is going to be equal to, let's see, 2, so this would be, okay, so this one should be minus, actually, so it's going to be minus, so we have x5, so it's minus 2x5, okay, so it's minus 2, minus, oops, minus 2t, all right, so then x3 will be uh, 2t, minus 2s okay all right so just again this should be that should be minus 2x5 there okay all right so okay so that gives us x3 is equal to 2t minus 2s okay all right so so now so now we can go ahead and solve for x1 in terms of of our free variables So let's do that over here. So x1 is going to be, so we have x1 minus 2x2, okay, minus x4 plus 3x5 equals to 0, okay. Okay, so then, 
So now we have x1 minus 2x2. So x2 was r, x4 was s, and x5 was t. Okay, so solving for x1, we have c um, 2r plus s minus 3t. Okay. Okay, so now, okay, so we have we have x1, okay, we have x1, x3, and then we have our free variables here. So now we can go ahead and write our solution, write our solution. So, so our solution, okay, x is going to be composed of x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. So x1, we have 2r plus s minus 3t. x2 was a free variable, that's r. x3 was 2t minus 2s. x4 was a free variable, and so was x5. So now we can go ahead and write this um, in parametric form. So this, so this is the uh, null space of a, actually, right now. Okay, but we want to uh, we want to write it in terms of the of this of a spanning set, okay, for for this matrix A. Okay, so we can just go ahead and do that by writing this in parametric form. Okay, so this is equal to. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out R. Okay, so R, so it's going to be 2, 1, 0, 0, and 0. Okay, and then we have S, so it's going to be 1 minus 2, uh, actually that's going to be 0. So this is for S, so this will be 0, then we have minus 2, 1, then zero. And then for t, we have minus three, two, zero, and then two, zero, and then one. Okay, so this this is the spanning set. Okay, so this is the null space written in parametric form. Okay, and we wrote it, uh, we can write that, so we can write the null space in terms of a linear combination of three vectors. So we can call, um, for the first one, we can call this V1, V2, and then V3. So the null space of A can be written in this form. So we have the R times V1 plus S times V2 plus T times V3. Okay. So it turns out, it turns out that this, uh, that these vectors V1, V2, and V3, uh, this forms what's called the basis. Okay. This is the basis of the null space. Okay. So the basis of a null, the basis is uh, when your set is, it spans, so it spans the space it's in, okay, and the vectors that are composed of this, of this um, set, okay, is linearly independent, okay, so V1, V2, and V3 actually turn out to be the basis for this null space, okay, so the basis Okay, it's just V1, V2, and V3. So that forms the basis. OK, 
Okay, and again, V1, V2, and V3, um, we can very easily verify that those are linearly independent of each other. Okay, you can set it up, right, as a matrix, do, do some, do an REF on it, and you'll see that you'll get the identity. Um, you'll get, you'll see that you'll get uh, three pivots here. One pivot in each column, okay? And then also this spans the space that it's in, okay? All right. And because there's three of them, there's three vectors here. So the dimension of this, the dimension of the null space here is three, okay? Okay, because simply we have three vectors, okay, that composes of this, of the basis of the null space. Okay.